with my BFF, Lisa Rice, who I adore. And actually, <laughs> I like that. <laughs> so I hope you guys are all doing incredibly well. Um, and, okay, here we go. It, there's I'm this lag like time where okay. it shows zero for like longer than it should and then people come in. So welcome everyone. It is a beautiful day in the neighborhood. I um, sat outside and wrote a newsletter. I'm still behind on some things because I was a little bit sick. Oh, um, no. Yeah, um, and I know why. I ate inside a restaurant, which I don't normally do, and there was a coughing fool in there who would not cover their mouth. We moved, oh. but it didn't matter. Oh. Who's getting Did you get COVID? No, no. Oh, thank goodness. Okay, no. good. Um, but we went at an odd time, so we weren't expecting anybody else to come in. It was like 3 o'clock we ate or something. And anyhow, won't be doing that again. Well, that's <laughs> just a, a strong argument for cooking your own food and eating at home. My husband, who is also sick, and we think it was from eating at a restaurant, um, we, we talked about that. We're like, you know, we eat home so much now because I love to cook and he loves the food I make that um, we're really, really like going to be selected when we do go out. I appreciate you supporting me in that because like <laughs> we're, we're pretty careful. I mean, we're, you know, there's this continuum of where you're still doing things for COVID or not. There's the mm -hmm. I'm not. Mm -hmm. And then there's the I'm still doing everything, right? Yeah. Exactly yeah. the same way as 2020. And we're we're in the middle closer to the doing things like 2020, if that makes sense. Mm. So I will go out with a mat like we wear N95s when we go to the grocery store and stuff like that. But um, and yeah, so if, if it's crowded, I will like if it's I don't like to go to restaurants when it's at its peak. Like I'd rather go, like you said, when it's sort of an off time or sit outside. And then like if it's a if the store is crowded, definitely I have a mask on. But if it's like, you know, on a normal weekday when there's just a few people in there, I don't I don't know. It probably doesn't make a difference, but I probably should wear it, <laughs> wear it anyway. <laughs> I, well, I think most of us, you know, so there's these there's this part on each end that like knows what they're going to do. And I think there's like at least 50 percent of us that are like what and so um we tend to be like there definitely was an upper respiratory that's not covid going around and i'm pretty sure i mean i wouldn't have got over covid in three days oh no no yeah 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 so i feel pretty confident about that we actually are out of tests like this wasn't supposed to be a covid talk but it's me and lisa who knows what's gonna happen uh, <laughs> and so I'm really bummed I can't get free tests because I did not know they're like 10 to $14 each. Oh, they are? So no more free tests, huh? Well, you know, I took my husband to the urgent care yesterday because he's had a stomach thing that we are pretty sure he got a, a parasite or something from eating out. And um, they did a COVID test. And I was like, oh, I hadn't even thought about that. Like I hadn't, like they did a um, flu test, which made sense. But I was like, oh, yeah. I mean, not that his symptoms were COVID, but I guess they still automatically do that, you know? Well, and it's it's so hard to tell because, like, um, we have allergies. So, like, we've just kind of got, we've gotten Same over here. tree pollen, but there's still some other things blooming that will be blooming. So you don't know what's what. Yeah, and Maria yeah. is saying it's hard to decide whether one should mask or not. And it I know, is. again, on either end of that spectrum, there are very strong answers. And we, mm -hmm. we definitely mask more than any of our friends or family. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm just yeah. waiting for when we go to um, Florida, because um, Cheryl's parents live there. <laughs> and every time I'm like something, I'm like, this, this is where I'm going to get it. Because they're in Florida. Yeah. They're like, oh, we don't need to do that. They've got the tables mm. far away. Oh, you know, for, they were doing really well for a couple of years. Mm. Yeah. And, and they do well, have know, a... Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, when we're in San Francisco, um, you know, we live in an area where it's a large Asian population. And it's just, they're so used to wearing masks when someone's sick, you know. So you see more mask wearing. 
and um, you know the but we take the buses there. We don't have a car there, and the buses have the windows open. So if if it's not crowded, I'll I won't wear a mask unless someone or two or three people get on with a mask. Then I put my mine on just for them, really, because they're obviously you know, and um, that's kind of how I've been treating it. And then if the bus is really crowded, I put one on automatically. So we're kind of the same way. Like if we're going to the farmer's market outside, we all, we, we go in without one, but if it's like really crowded, so like the Durham farmer's market gets really crowded and you're just mm. packed in. So we put yeah, a mask on then. Yeah. People are like a foot away, right? <laughs> yeah. And this was just kind of a fluke because normally we only eat outside anyhow, but the two outside tables were taken. It was, we th anyhow yeah. it's my fault but i got better pretty quick <laughs> cheryl got better pretty quick so and we didn't good, good, good. we were if we went anywhere we wore masks obviously yeah. so we didn't get anybody else sick and we canceled things with friends and yeah. i'm sorry yeah. that david's not feeling well. so you, it's you say it's intestinal more like stomach yeah. flu fruit oh, slash yeah. food was, poisoning it very much mimics like a giardia kind of thing um, but don't get me started about the air because I'm like, you need to do a test. And they're like, it's only been four days. I'm like, well, when do you want to test it? They're like 10 days. I'm like, why not test it now and rule it out? Like if you, because he's like in bad shape. Oh, I'm so mad. So we, I called the um, supervisor of the urgent care and they said to bring him back and they'll do the test. And they want oh, good. Yeah. So I was like, I was like, why did I leave there without insisting on it? <laughs> but you know, and, and that's hard too, because, and, and we can always take these little topics and, and put a pin in it too, because like, I think talking with you would be, oh, Chef Al's on with us, yay, hey, Chef Al. Hi. I think it could Chef be Al. really Hi, interesting for us to talk about kind of like being proactive mm -hmm. in talking to your medical professionals and things like that, because one of the things, speaking of COVID again, which would I was not gonna talk about at all today, um, <laughs> In Boston, evidently, there's a hospital there. I guess in Boston, the hospitals are not masking because there's not a mandate anymore. Uh -huh. They do where I am. So all of my providers are masking. But someone was saying with one of the hospitals, if you ask for, a, for someone to mask, they will make you leave. Oh, that doesn't and seem so, right. So, yeah, and so that's very interesting. So that might be something that we can talk about too, is kind of being your own yeah. advocate and, oh, you've got Polish pottery. I do, I love it. I just inherited a bunch from <laughs> Cheryl's mom. Well, I guess I didn't inherit it, it was gifted. Inherited you know, I means- my, I got my first ones from uh, like Tuesday morning. I had like two cups. And then I was like, I love these, I've got to find more. And I like, kind of looked around and they were really expensive. And then Costco, of all places, had this amazing sale. So I bought some more cups. Oh, <laughs> Sorry you... to cut you up. Tell oh, no, that that's great. And another place to get Polish pottery. And we look, um, TJ Maxx has a lot of it, Home Goods, oh. especially seasonal. Like, we got her a Polish pottery Christmas tree for oh, Christmas wow. one year oh, and we stuff. Have a, we have Christmas ornaments, actually. <laughs> that's that's really awesome. Cool. I love it. And I don't know my background, but I do know that Polish people often speak to me in Polish, so there's a good chance. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> and okay, let's see. Christina says, wow, when I got sick, it lasted a month, including vertigo. Oh, oh no. Negative for COVID-19. Yeah. And that's the thing is that certainly COVID exists out there and I am in no way trying to insinuate it does not. However, mm -hmm. because we're not wearing masks a hundred percent of the time and everybody now we're, we're remembering all of those other upper respiratory viruses in addition mm -hmm. to that. So yeah. Yeah. Oh, and, um, Vigana, I don't know if I'm saying that right in Sweden, the most people don't wear masks and, I would say probably less than 50% where I am wear masks all the time. Um, I like going to the Asian market because everybody's all nice and masked up. Um, <laughs> like, yeah, they're used to it. It's part of their culture. You know, somebody, somebody's got even just like a scratchy throat or a little sniffle or they put and, a mask on. Right. And with allergies, we, we even canceled some stuff because we're just, you're just not sure because allergies can make your glands swell just like, mm -hmm. um, 
an upper respiratory. Oh yeah, I have bad allergies to mold and to the uh, cedar pollen here. And I just don't want to be around people sneezing and, and rubbing my eyes, even if I know it's allergies, because <laughs> they're looking at me like, you know, why is she here, you know? She's right. Her, her sickness. Well, and I think it's just, it's a matter of being polite and kind, because like, yeah. you guys don't know this, because I like all of you guys. But there are a lot of people I'm not liking right now. I feel like a very old, like, get off my lawn person when I'm outside the house. Like, wear a mask. You're too close to me. Um, and, like, I can't remember what I was in line for. And some guy, like, I could feel him on my back. He wasn't trying to be that kind of creepy. He just, mm -hmm. And then I moved over no to the side. So if you ever see person. me do this and you're near me, give me some space. And then his wife came up. And I felt her on my back. Oh <laughs> and my I gosh. was like, you're those people. And I'm like, uh, so it's, it's very interesting. Yeah. Um, and 21st Century Homestead says, wow, cedar allergy. Um, it's actually, they call it cedar fever here in Austin, but it's actually mountain juniper. And they're not indigenous. They brought the trees in here back in the day for the cow pastures. And um, everybody gets, even pe I never had allergies my entire life, my entire life until I moved to Austin 18 years ago. And I, it's like being sick all the time during the cedar season, out in Juniper. I tried everything. Um, so yeah, <laughs> the cedar season. It can, it can be really hard in North Carolina and like in Asheville, I think there's the most wildflowers per acre of any mm. place oh, ever. Oh, wow. So you're, you get a lot of allergies and usually the tree pollen wasn't so bad. Like it's been where like for a couple of days, like you've probably seen these pictures on Facebook where it looks like there's this yellow air and you're like, oh, that was Photoshopped. No. It's not. We got back from San Francisco and our car was covered. You couldn't even see through the windshield of yellow pollen. Yeah, and because spring came like a month early, like I have almost a whole jalapeno to pick in my oh, little, wow. I'm like, it's crazy. <laughs> and I'm about to get some other stuff in too. But in case oh, you don't know, Lisa Rice is awesome. That's oh, obvious if awesome. you've stuck around. <laughs> <laughs> and if you look below weheal.health, if you go and you look on the recipes, that's where you can find her. But I don't want to keep you too long today because I know you need to be nursemaid today as well. <laughs> I do. And so I'm going to go ahead and put it on you and I'll let you know what the questions are. Okay. So I know you're making some ribs too. And, um, you know, you and I have been using seitan probably since we were, you know, I know I, I discovered it in the 80s um, and there was a little um, health food market in New York City that had just like those takeout containers with it floating in there and it looked terrible but I learned about it and I started using it and then I learned to make my own. So I've you know I've been kind of familiar with the seitan products and use them you know throughout the years and now they're like all these crazy ways to use it the ribs and I um, I make a brisket that's fantastic. I almost did that for today, but it's a little more uh, work intensive. Um, but anyway, so I wanted to try, I'd seen a lot of people adding the um, jackfruit, the canned jackfruit and brine, which is the unsweet, the, the young jackfruit before it gets sweet and brine used for savory dishes, which uh, you all are probably already familiar with because it's used for a multitude of things like, you know, mock tuna and, um, you know, mock crab. So, but I liked the idea of it because it's, um, you know, it's got that sort of meaty texture. It makes a good like pulled pork. And I thought, oh, mixing that with this, the wheat gluten will give it that sort of, you know, like you pull it apart and there's little flaky pizza pieces of meat. So I wanted to try that. And so this recipe is sort of like, I looked at a bunch online and then I, I sort of put this together from just reading a lot of other people's recipes and using like my old seitan recipe. But I... I I really want to make it, and I'm working on this, but it's not ready yet. I want to try making one actually without the wheat gluten. I want to do it with beans and jackfruit, but it's not quite there yet texture-wise. So that's going to be next. And it can be really hard here. I'll go back to both of us for a minute. Like I have a couple of gluten-free seitan type recipes. So I've got a bunch of sausages that I've seen. Oh, those are awesome. Yeah, and you can get it at yeah. Trader Joe's, the jackfruit. Um, Chef Asian Al market. says she's not a fan of jackfruit, but she likes seitan. Someone else says they hate seitan. 
which, you know, <laughs> you're always going to get that. It's okay. You can modify these things for you. And I have a seitan ribs that you make in the air fryer. And I had the weirdest comment. They like were very insistent. They commented in two places. It's because like you make it, it's a, the quickest Satan ever because you make it, you make a little square, you cook it in your air fryer, it poofs up like crazy. It's weird. And mm -hmm. then I say, don't panic. You cut it, toss it in sauce and cook it again, which makes it super chewy. And yeah. they're like, is it, is it even cooked if it's not boiled or steamed? And I was like, well, yes. Well, yeah, I mean, if you've, if you've got some sauce going, like when I make the uh, seitan brisket, it's like you're braising it and it's like moist. And But okay, so for the seitan um, haters, I totally get it because it is kind of not great. It's, it's, it's like a lot of the plant-based things like tofu and stuff. Like if you don't really treat it, like season it, marinate it, you know, get some texture on it. It's kind of gross. It's like a sponge, right? So, uh, so this recipe, I think, is a good way to sort of disguise it. If you don't like the idea of eating the protein from wheat, if you're gluten intolerant, um, I am working on a recipe using chickpea flour, which is also high protein. The tricky part is getting the texture. You know, the thing with the seitan and the wheat gluten is when you knead it, it just gets a little more dense, right? It, get, it, it provides that sort of more dense, meaty texture. But, um, but I am working on the other one and I'm determined to get it because it won't have any gluten in it. Okay, and great. And if you want to, I'm happy to share with you, if you remind me, the couple mm -hmm. of recipes that I've made that do, do steam. But then with the gluten-free seitan, for me, then you make it into the big sausage, like the Beyond Meat size sausages, and uh -huh. steam it. And that's a lot of work to ask from people. So first, you know, I put, vet, like I have carrot, uh, not carrot dogs, but I have veggie dogs where I've got beets and carrots and potatoes and mm -hmm. chickpea flour and soy flour and all the things. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I make um, I make some sausages without any uh, wheat gluten that are the base is beans. I like to use beans as much as possible because they're so good for you, and I just love beans. Um, and those you do have to steam also to get the texture. Um, but I haven't quite that recipe modified hasn't worked for my ribs yet because it's they still crumble. So it's this it's like not having that gluten to sort of like have that pull apart sensation. Um, I haven't discovered that yet. So if you've got tricks for that without using the gluten, I want to hear about them. <laughs> okay. And you may or may not love them. So we'll see. So you can, okay. you can certainly try it. And 21st Century Home says that I'd yet to find jackfruit fresh. You should look at your Asian markets, wherever you oh, have near yeah. you. And I will tell you this right now. It is my goal, personal goal, to never break down a jackfruit, especially an unripe oh one. I did it. Okay. <gasps> I, I love, I love ripe jackfruit. I love it. It tastes like juicy fruit gum. It tastes like candy, but it is so much work. It's, I, I kind of treated it like meditation. It's really a lot of work to just get it all out and pulled apart and get the seeds out. But once you do, you have like so much of it and it's so delicious, just fresh. But you know what I'll do then is I freeze it, the, it in pieces. And it's good in smoothies, but I like to just eat the frozen jackfruit as a treat in the summertime. The sweet jackfruit, it's so good. So it's, Ooh, it's that worth, sounds worth the, yeah, it's worth the work, but you can also, a lot of the Asian markets will sell it packaged where they've done it for you as well, the fresh jackfruit. Have you done an unripe jackfruit? Because I saw a video no. of it and like latex <laughs> comes out and stuff and like you have to wear gloves. So it's the, it's the, it's the unripe that I want to never break down. I am willing to break down a regular jackfruit. Just well, you know, I did wear gloves with the ripe because there's something in the um, pith or the skin or something on the inside, not the fruit itself, that's almost like gl gluey texture on your hands and, and it's a pain to get off. So um, I did actually wear gloves when I broke it down. I learned the hard way. <laughs> yeah, it, it's weird. And Justine says, does the ripe sweet jackfruit also come in a can? Yes, it does. And often it is in a sugar syrup, and you can find that yeah. in your Asian market. They only have the unripe jackfruit at Trader Joe's. And Dee said yeah. it took her an entire half a day in 2020. And yeah. it was oh, eight well, pounds. Was to do it, I guess. <laughs> 
Um, yeah, it's a, it's a lot of work, but, um, and then the jackfruit, the ripe stuff in the heavy syrup, I'm sure it's delicious. I don't know what application I'd use that for, but definitely not for obviously any savory dishes. So, um, but yeah, so anyway, I got the jackfruit and I drained it and I'm just taking a little bit of the water out of it. And I just, you know, I've seen so many recipes where they're like, you know, here, I didn't cut this one up. You know, the tip here is a little bit tougher and I'm like, I've seen people cut that off and then take the seeds out. I use the whole thing. This part is a little tougher, but you can still break it. So I just use my hands to break it apart. I like all the different textures. I like the stringy part. I like the tough part. So I use the whole thing. Um, part of that too is that I don't want to have to cut that off and pick out the seeds. It's just too much work. <laughs> I do that too. And the thing is, is with the unripe seeds, I, at first, when I first started using jackfruit, I would pick out the seeds and now I just leave them mm -hmm. in because I do love, I love the tip of, of the jackfruit yeah. pieces because it's almost like, I, I use that in like a chicken tortilla soup and it really oh, makes it feel like chicken. And yeah. Vegiana was saying, "Did have I made uh, uh, ice cream from durian yet? I have not, oh, but I love durian. Oh, I've got to do it then. Um, we have, there's a uh, I always I get the frozen durian. I like the fresh durian. Uh, no one around me likes the fresh durian when I do get it, and I haven't gotten it in a long time. But I do get the frozen durian uh, because there's a smoothie bar near us called Juice Land, and they make a amazing smoothie called the calibrator it's got kale in it and the base is like durian and banana and um i, I don't remember what else but the, the star of the smoothie is a durian so i started getting it so i could mimic that smoothie because it's kind of expensive and i can make it at home but it's so good <laughs> i love that and stinky Vegiana said, I put the jackfruit pieces in my tofu press and it comes out dry and broken i haven't tried that but i'll have oh, to smart. it's a good idea yeah well, I often, you know, you could just break it down also in a, a food processor, but I just find it super easy to break down with your hands. So, um, all right, well, let me get started. Um, and I'm, I apologize to those of you who don't like seitan. I am using gluten, uh, <laughs> vital meat gluten today. Let me get my measuring cup. <clears throat> And Gina's saying, Edward and Sons has boxed young jackfruit, and it's only jackfruit, no salt. So those of you who are avoiding salt, that's a great place to try it. And she got it at Sprouts. Oh, that's good to know. I love Edward and Sons products. In fact, I'm going to be using one today. Ooh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they have, I love their crackers. But yeah, I think, I don't know if I've ever seen their jackfruit. Um, I know that... Um, What's that other company that has all the packaged jackfruit? Um, I'm having a brain fart. They do the chili, so Upton's. Do Upton's. Yes, yeah, Upton's. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, yeah and they have some flavor jackfruit. There's some other brand. Sprouts ends up having some things that don't come in to my area any other way. So I've seen a bunch of like jackfruit stuff recently. Yeah, I mean, I, Trader Joe's used to have a seasoned jackfruit in like a shelf stable packet. I. I, I I haven't seen it in a while. I don't tend to buy that stuff because I find it to be like over sauced. Um, I like to season it myself. So, um, but yeah, I like Upton's because they do a lot of their products without oil. Um, they have like a chorizo and stuff without oil. Um, so I'm putting about two, let's see, two and a third cups of the gluten in here, the vital wheat gluten. So we're going to get that in there. And then I'm going to make a, a dry rub. <laughs> so I'm going to start with <clears throat> um, some nutritional yeast. And hopefully there's no one on here who hates nutritional yeast. Because <laughs> those people are out there too, I know. Well, um, some so people are allergic to it. And when I, if someone's allergic to it, I tell them to perhaps try some tomato powder or mushroom powder, not in the same amount, just to add yes. a little umami. Yes, um, that's very smart. I, um, I'm going to show you a product I got that I don't know. Um, I'm, I'm just kind of playing with it. So I'm going to do two of these beef, beefless bouillon cubes from Edward and Sons. Um, I'm going to start with that, and then I'm going to add some, and it's, I'm going to blend these all together. So I've got um, my nutritional yeast, and I'll post this. I'll have this recipe up on my, on our website. And you know, 
I have to, I, I have to admit it's not perfected, but it's really good, <clears throat> but it's not, I'm still kind of playing, you know, do you do that with your recipes? You're just constantly playing with them and morphing them and until that's you're like, That's the fun of what we do, right? So, uh -huh. and, and that's why I like kind of adapting things as people have allergies or preferences and things too. It's fun. Yes, definitely. I love having, um, you know, alternatives for people also for who don't like certain things, like for someone who doesn't like seitan or can't eat the you know, nutritional yeast. Um, so I'm going to put some smoked paprika in here because we want the ribs to be smoky. I'm putting about, I don't know, three teaspoons. And you could put more if you want, but I'm going to start with three. And then, you know, I actually taste the um, it before I bake it <laughs> when it's raw, just to see. Um, and then you, you want lots of onion powder. Where's my onion powder? Doo -doo -doo. And just for anybody who wants to make this now and maybe you don't have beefy bullion cubes, if you go to healthyslowcooking.com, I have a dry beefy bullion if you want to go make it. It's easy. I've got to, I've got to make some of those recipes of yours. Um, so that was onion powder. And then I'm going to put, so that was about two teaspoons. I'm going to put some garlic powder. Um, I'm measuring. I usually, I'm not very good at measuring things, and I'm trying to get better about it so I can share my recipes, and it's been really hard to do. I'm putting in some cumin, some ground cumin, um, and I've got some mustard powder I'm putting in, about a, tea, a teaspoon, it's kind of a teaspoon of each of those. I've got more, two teaspoons of the onion, two teaspoons of the garlic, three teaspoons of the smoked paprika, one of the cumin, one of the mustard, um, and I like um, a little little tiny bit of spice in it. And um, I love Rancho Gordo has really fantastic seasonings. Do you use their seasonings? Oh, yeah. Oops, let me, let me move them. this. I've got a comment up there. Ooh, which one is that? It's just, oh, it's this their This is the New Mexican chili powder. It's yes. Not, um, it's not the blend. It's just the chili. And it's, I love the flavor of it. And it's not super, I'm a spice wimp, so it's it's not super spicy. So I'm going to put a teaspoon of that in. Do you have a comment or a question? Oh, just people are talking about jackfruit and Upton. Joanne liked, tried the Upton brand but likes hers better. And then someone says, do you think mushrooms would be a good suggestion for um, jackfruit? Well, actually, yes. You can leave the jackfruit out of this. And I am actually heating this pan because I love mushrooms. <laughs> and so I chopped up very fine a port one portobello mushroom. So that I am going to add that to this. And Ooh. you can make this with the, the mushrooms and the, uh, the wheat gluten without the jackfruit. If you don't like jackfruit, without a doubt, just leave it out. Um, so I'm going to I'm going to cook this till it's kind of dry, and then I'm going to add that to the mixture. And the product. And don't run out and buy this. I just I, I had seen it and I wanted I to got try some it. of that and I haven't the used it yet. <laughs> Is it good? Like, yeah, it's good. It's got a nice flavor. It's salty, umami, sweet. But I when I cook mushrooms for a dish like this, I've been using it to kind of give it a little bit more umami. Um, but the the jury's still out for me. I'm not really sure if I'm using it correctly or I haven't found like the thing like that can't. I can't, uh, that can't be made without it yet, <laughs> you know, but, but I like it, but I'm going to put some in uh, just a the drizzle of it in my mushroom. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting. Yeah. I, 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 I'm excited to hear how you use it because I'm still experimenting. Well, chef AJ asked me a while ago to make a, something like a salt free, soy free soy sauce. <laughs> ah. So I okay. bought some similar things around just to try. Um, mm -hmm. And a v Vigana is saying for umami, she uses some wak wakame. Is that, how do you say it? Oh, wakame, wakame, wakame seaweed. Wakame. Dried wakame. Our That's miso. A good idea. And Joanne yeah, says she loves Rancho Gordo's Mexican oregano. And I, oh, I'm yeah. all in. I actually have a pound bag that I bought of Mexican oregano because it's so awesome. Um, this is kind of a weird one, but I, I don't know why. I just felt compelled to put a little cinnamon in my mix. Ooh, you know what I'm doing right now? I'm putting it in here. I'm meaning to put it in here. So I'm <laughs> not, in, not in the wheat gluten. I'm putting it in my dry rub because I'm going to uh, 
I'm going to pulse that up with so that the um, bouillon breaks down. But it's okay. It's all going in the salt. same bowl later. <laughs> I'm just not paying attention. Uh, but, well, we um, appreciate you being here with us today with you having so much stuff going on. So that was very kind oh, of you. Oh, I love being here with you. I love chatting. I love your um, viewers and the questions. It's so, so great to hear everybody's sort of favorite things and the things they don't like and all the questions. Um, it's really helpful to me, so thank you. I like to, to really know what people are into and thinking of like creative ways. To this is awesome, you have to hear this. So Lisa, I don't know if you know Lisa Viger or not, she said, so, and I'll just mute you for a second. So just curious, how many spices are normal to have? Is 200 plus or minus too many asking for a friend? Oh, and, funny. And I'm like, I have, okay, I don't know if you guys can see, if you can see this at all from here. Okay, this whole drawer is full. That's the normal everyday ones. My cabinets are full with more, and then I have like buckets in the pantry of refills. Are you like that? Yeah, yeah so that one's full, and then I've got a double door one over there that's full. <laughs> So I think the consensus, Lisa, is it's incredibly normal. <laughs> it's, if you like to cook and you're whole food plant-based, or even if you're not, it's how could you not like be interested in all the different flavors and trying them? My dogs go in and out all day long. Do your dogs do that? Yes. Come on, get in. Um, um, and Vigana is saying it, the where you're mixing your seitan is not on the heat just it just happens to be near this rim. yeah i just have it in here so i can show you what i'm doing so then my dry rub is going to go in with the wheat gluten so that's my dry my dry mixture and joanne says thank you for spending your free time with us lisa you have a busy life oh we all do thank you for being here thank you so much okay so let me uh stir this up So I'm going to get this going, and then I'm going to do my wet mixture. Where did I put that bowl? Okay. So that's my dry mixture. And then my wet mixture. Oh, before I do that, I'm going to add my jackfruit to the dry mixture and just coat it. So I'm going to put that in with the wheat gluten and the dry rub, and I'm going to mix it up and just coat it. And I, I got as much of the liquid out of, of the jackfruit as I could because I don't want my dough to be too wet, so I kind of tossed it in the towel a little bit. Okay, and I've got my mushrooms, look like they're good. All the liquid is pretty much gone. And you could throw some onion in here, you could throw some more garlic in here. Um, okay, so that's ready. Put this aside. And then I'm gonna get my grill pan so we can do the ribs soon. Okay, all right, now for my wet mixture. Um, let's see, what's in my wet mixture? <laughs> okay, I've got some vegetable broth, which is low sodium, and the reason I'm using low sodium is because um, I've got the bouillons in here. Otherwise, it might be too salty. So I'm putting in about three quarters of a cup And then I like a lot of garlic and, um, you know, I was doing a class where I was demoing, I use fresh garlic, you know, I go through uh, who knows how many heads. I actually had a student in one of my classes comment on how much garlic I used yesterday. <laughs> so, um, but anyway, but for people who don't cook as often, um, I am a fan of this stuff. I don't use it a lot at home, um, but I have some because I was showing you know, people who don't want to, you know, get the fresh garlic and cut it, um, how to use it. So I'm like, so this morning I was like, oh, I have it. I'm going to use it. So I'm going to add this some to my wet mix. And it's a very, it's, it's potent, I find, in a way that's different from fresh garlic. It's almost mo more potent than fresh garlic, wouldn't you say? I would agree. And I use it a lot as well, yeah. just because... I always have one open in my fridge and one in my pantry. And then if I feel like squishing the garlic, I do. But like if I'm doing a class with five recipes, that's a lot of garlic to be chopping up. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm constantly, I smell like garlic all the time. One time, this was several years ago, I did um, a, one of those Camp Gladiator boot camps. And it was, you know, and it was, it was, hot, you know, it's hot here in Austin all the time. And I, we had a partner up and the person I partnered with, because we were sweating, told me I smelled like garlic. <laughs> oh, no. I'm like, I said, well, I guess there are worse things to smell like. At least I don't smell like, you know, the horrible BL. She's like, no, you smell like garlic. <laughs> okay. Um, so here I'm going to add some, so my favorite, you can use any barbecue sauce you want. I love Austin's own. I don't even know if you can get it outside of Austin. <clears throat> I like the tanginess of it, but I ran out of it and I had to run to the supermarket. So I just got some stubs. <clears throat> so I'm going to add about half a cup of the barbecue sauce to my veggie broth. So this is the wet mix I'm doing here. So basically this is going to be what I use to bind our dry mix. And then I'm going to need excuse me, knead it a little bit. Um, I'm going to put in some almond butter. Let's see, put a couple of, like three tablespoons of almond butter. You could probably use, I don't know, I probably, I wouldn't want to use peanut butter or tahini. It'd probably be too strong flavored. Maybe sun butter you could use. <clears throat> If you didn't want to use almond butter, sunflower butter would probably a good, be a good option. And then, oh yeah, a little maple syrup. Let me grab that. Begana is saying, I fermented my garlic four weeks in my basement in a rice cooker, so you don't smell like garlic, but the time was terrible for my neighbors. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's funny. You know, that reminds me, um, have you, um, did you hear about that sir, sriracha factory that had to shut down because the odor that people in the neighborhood were complaining about the smell of the sriracha production? Yes, I did. That reminds me of that. Okay, um, I'm going to put some maple syrup, a little less than a quarter of a cup. And, oh, and very important, um, I'm going to put some liquid smoke and I think that's everything. I think I wrote this down incorrectly. <laughs> I think it's only a couple tablespoons of maple syrup. Anyway, um, I'll, it'll be correct on the website. I and you can watch the replay and see what she's done. That's what I, <laughs> if I teach a class and I'm writing the recipes, I forget something. I go and watch myself again to see what I actually did. Well, the correct measurements will be on the website. I'm going to post the web, uh, the picture, the, recipe in the picture later. Um, so by the end of the day today, the, it'll be up. But I think I just might have messed up my ingredients a little bit, but that's okay, because it's it'll be fine. Um, okay, and then I'm gonna put uh, like three teaspoons of liquid smoke. And I ran out, you know, I always get what they've whatever they've got available. And um, I had stubs earlier and I ran out of it with my first batch. So I ran to the store, I've used this one before. Most supermarkets tend to have this one. And then this one I bought just to try. I haven't tried it yet. It's this Figaro Mesquite Smoke. So I've got a few different ones, but I'm going to use I've tried that right before. Now. I have one, and I get it at uh, on Amazon. Now, I don't know about the ingredients in the Figaro. Uh-huh. Which one is it? Let me see. Oh, yeah. Hi, I don't think I've seen that one. I can't hear you. Lazy Kettle brand, and uh, it literally doesn't have anything but just liquid smoke, natural liquid smoke. So the, the fire goes, someone catches the condensation, and it's in this <laughs> bottle. Some of them will have caramel colorings and some other things in them. And I found one that was just gross, but you don't find it usually. It has. Oh, this one has... This has vinegar, molasses, and caramel coloring. What yeah. was the grocery you found? Did it have like fish in it or something? <laughs> like <the> ancho anchovies? <laughs> I know. I'm always waiting for like some horrible, horrible ingredient. But for people who are like, I don't want to use liquid smoke because I'm not using caramel color or anything like that, you can get Lazy Kettle brand on Amazon. Well, that's really good to know. I feel like I forgot something. Oh, black pepper. <laughs> you guys, I'm really like in la la land today. I'll just put the black pepper in here. So I'm going to mix my um, 
wet with my dry, and I'm going to throw my mushrooms in. So I just cooked these till there was really no water left, so they got dry. And they're cut really small. So it's just a, to add some umami and some texture. I can't wait to get my, my legume version of this together because I'm, I just really want one made from beans. Okay, mm. so I'm going to stir this up and then I'm going to knead it for about a minute just to get the fiber sort of active and that'll help with the texture, right, Kathy? It will. It's going to be yummy. I can already tell. And Chef Bell has, where, let me see if I can find it. Um, she has a black garlic fermenter machine. Ooh. And you know I love all machines for the kitchen. So, so you can I tell I've been distracted this morning because I also forgot the soy sauce. <laughs> But what you're showing everyone is that even when you're kind of a little bit frazzled, a little distracted, and you don't do a recipe perfectly as it's written, yeah. it doesn't mean you're going to have a bad dinner. Not and at that's all. important and to know. Yes. And, you know, recipes like this are pretty forgiving anyway, aren't they? Because, you know, as long as you, you, you've got all the flavors in there and, and some kind of flavoring, and then with the working with like a wheat gluten, this kind of thing, you want the texture. The texture is really important. It's it's very true. And that's what can be a little bit. Oh, and Chef Al says she uses Wright's liquid smoke, W-R-I-G-H-T, and that doesn't have anything in it either. Oh, I'm gonna look for that. You know, I don't use liquid smoke very frequently. I use it for when I make sh like shiitake mushroom bacon, or carrot locks or like this type of thing. But I don't make eat that stuff regularly. Um, I'd rather get it without, you know, the added, added stuff in it, but <clears throat> I'm glad, you know, if I ate it, probably if I used it more regularly, I'd really make a point to get it without that. And for me, it kind of just, I use it a lot. Like I'm, uh -huh. I'm all in on everything smoked. I even have different kinds of smoked salts. And I'm going to be yeah. smoking some on the grill at some point when I get caught up. <laughs> It'll be December, Lisa, and I'll be like, let's do a grill class. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you can do that here in Austin. <laughs> well, this past year, you could do it mostly here. Like fall lasted forever. And yeah. then I was growing some arugula seeds outside, and they were starting to do really well. And then it got like... 15 degrees for a week and then it, oh. yeah it was weird not good for the arugula um so well i've got my grill pan here you know if you really want like those grill marks you just have your grill pan i have a cast iron one in san francisco i don't have a cast iron one somebody gifted me just a pan with grill you know the grill things in it okay so this is needed so what I'm going to do, my oven's preheated to 350. I'm going to get a 9 by 13 baking dish. And I'm going to dump the mixture in here. And I'm going to spread it out. <laughs> this one, something went awry. <laughs> I think... Uh, I didn't break up the jackfruit enough. I probably should have used the um, food processor. This one, this jackfruit was a little tougher than the one the batch I made, which I'll show you. So I'm going to bake this at 350 for about 20 minutes, and then I'm going to baste it with the more barbecue sauce, and I'm going to bake it 20 minutes more, and then I'm going to flip it over and baste it again and cook it for another 20 minutes, um, and I'm going to let it cool. But before I do that, I'm going to score it into rib size. Oh, actually, you know what I used before because it was kind of tearing as I was cutting it? I wish I had something bigger, but I have this little, it's got barbecue sauce on it. Sauce on it. It's like a cheese, cheese cutter thing. I actually used that so that I wouldn't tear it. Oh, that's cool. Another thing that I use is like, what is it? A dough scraper. I have a dough scraper I use sometimes. Oh, yeah, this is like a mini dough scraper. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to bake it first without the sauce so that, you know, it doesn't, it's not too wet. 
and then I'm going to put the sauce on and bake it a couple more times. And then I'm going to let it rest and take it to my barbecue um, when I go over to my friends. And when they're grilling, they're probably, you know, my friends, uh, most of them are plant-based, but they, you know, they eat, um, I love the Beyond Burgers, but sometimes I just don't want that. So I'll usually bring, they do a lot of mushrooms too, though. So, um, but it's fun to bring something you, that you can throw on the grill. So once these are done, you can just keep them in the fridge and then you're just going to, you don't really need to cook them. You're just going to get grill marks on them because they're kind of, they're already cooked because you've baked them. So those are going in the oven. And just like magic, they're done. <laughs> Yay! Uh, so now I've got my grill pan going. And I want to just do enough to get those lovely grill marks. Oh my gosh, this smells so good. I can't even tell you. Apple says the magic of TV. <laughs> so here's one of my ribs. And I'm going to get that going. You know what? I should probably baste it a little more because it's been sitting. So it got a little dry um, on the bottom. So I'll baste it. And wheat gluten will so soak up a lot of stuff. If it's, you know, yes. that's the whole reason, like when we steam it and stuff, it makes it very interesting. But like what's kind of important to know too is that you don't always have to spend an hour steaming it. There's some shortcuts too. An hour doing what? I said there's still there you can do some shortcuts and still have seitan too. It doesn't all have to be hours of steaming. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I don't think I was wondering if you could take this without baking it and just cook it like just take the slab of it and put it on your grill and like close the grill. But I haven't tried that yet, but that would be cool. I'll have to try I suspect that. it would work. And I mean, and this, yeah, I do suspect it would work. Yeah. And, Cause I do a weird thing with mine and like every, everyone who doesn't read the directions panics. Like I even have step-by-step -step <laughs> things because it, you put it in it poofs up and they're like, it's like bread. It's like, and it's like, yes. Oh. Don't, and I even say in the instructions, take a deep breath, don't panic, just slice it. And mm -hmm. then it all deflates. Right. Yeah. But that's yeah. where all the super chewy parts come from. Yeah, and I think that um, that's where it's really important to knead it if you don't want it to be, right? Because the more you work it, the more it the, sort of creates those strands and gets, gets more, more dense, dense, right? Yeah, and the one that I do is a particular, it's a particular odd little thing. But, um, but yeah, and how, how tough or tender it will be is how much mm -hmm. you knead it as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, and also I think it's the ratio of your wheat gluten with like your other ingredients, whether it's your beans or your mushrooms or your jackfruit. Um, I would guess that that would influence the texture as well, right? Yes. And Vigana is asking um, if she can see the pan. So I don't know if you, can you oh, reach? So, yeah, don't burn yes, yourself yes, though. Can. Sorry. See, that's, that's how like, like sleep, sleep deprived I am. I'm like, oh yeah. yeah. You can that's great. That you, can, you can see it? Yeah, and yeah, you can even move it up a little bit if you want, because we're seeing, oh, there we go. That's great. No, it's perfect. Yeah. So before I flip it, though, so it doesn't stick, I'm going to face the top a little bit. And um, they're going to be nice. And you know those, I mean, I haven't had this kind of thing in got decades, but like those sticky ribs where it's all sticking to your fingers and it's pulling apart. Like that's how these, that's the kind these will be. I know there are ways you can put in like a sugar cane or a piece of bamboo and make it like a rib, but I don't bother with all of that. I don't do that either. I know some people, we've had the conversation about calling things ribs and chicken and beef, like I do, but like then yeah. I, I don't really feel the need to have those things in because I'm just yeah. looking for flavors because I'm very much a flavor eater. Same here. Same, but in texture, you know, we want this texture to be nice and sink your teeth into it, right? Um, but I know, I know, I know a lot of vegan people get really upset about using the term wings with cauliflower or ribs with seitan or burgers. But, you know, I think that that's a personal preference and that um, I, there are a lot of vegans who 
stopped eating it because they don't want to hurt animals. But if it didn't hurt animals, they would still eat it because they enjoy it. So that's, you know, I wouldn't enjoy it, but, um, but some people would like my son doesn't eat meat and he, but he said, if they come out with the lab grown meat, that's not using like an actual killing an animal, he'll eat it. Oh, interesting. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's one of those things that will be interesting to find out if that becomes a decision we have to make or not. Well, it's all, I mean, it's, they're making it, right? They're making it, but I don't think I've seen it for sale anywhere yet at this point. So oh, I wonder. Yeah, not it, yet. So it's, it'll be interesting. And I, I think that they are making something with milk. Like, is it not milk? Isn't that the brand that's made actually with... That, like people who have dairy allergies can't have it, but it's not made for cows. So. Oh, that's what I thought. Not milk was a plant, a plant uh, thing. It is plant. Well, okay. Well, I, I think it, I could milk. have the wrong brand too, but there is one brand, and I think it's the one that. Um, Can you see the grill marks? Yes, those are beautiful. Shake Shack. Yeah. Shake Shack is making some chocolate custard and a shake using it. So like some of the places like, um, oh, there's a website that does all dairy free. They're having to, and there's an ice cream too. There's an ice cream that definitely is, will cause allergies for dairy people, even though it's not made with cow milk. It's made with kind of like the, to, in my brain, it's probably not scientifically the same thing, but it's, it's in my brain. It's the same thing as the lab grown meat. Interesting. Yeah. Dairy is definitely something I can't like go near. It doesn't agree with me. Um, I don't like it, you know, so that's even if they made a cow's milk that didn't come from a cow, I, I wouldn't use it. Um, but I also wouldn't use, I wouldn't use the lab grown meat, but I def certainly support anyone who wants to eat it if it's going to stop them from eating the animals that were slaughtered, you know, if that's going to help them, I'm all for it. Yep. I do. I do agree. I do agree with you because I think it's important to look beyond just us and what we would choose and think of the, yeah. cause like, Honestly, like I remember when the whole, like I, things have changed now. I think this was in the 80s or the 90s. I think it was in the 80s. It's how long, it's how old I am. Is that I've become vegetarian. We are not old. We're just seasoned. And smarter. We're, we're, we're smarter. Why I don't it? mind being older. I'm like, I'm good. I'm good being old. But like, so they used to fry a lot of things in lard. I know that is kind of coming full circle now. But mm -hmm. there was a big cholesterol scare, scare. And then all of a sudden, so many things were open to vegetarians that were never open before. Ah, uh, yes. Well, here. So these are pretty much done. Like I said, they're, you know, they were cooked in the oven. So... You could eat them just out of the oven, but I personally like a little bit of char. I like that, and that's going to make it even taste a little smokier. Yes, and then, let's see, and then you can see when I pull it apart how it's got the fibers from the jackfruit that make it just a little bit more meat-like than um, just the seitan. So it's kind of fun. I think mm. it's awesome. It looks good. Mm. It's, it's... It is good. <laughs> I can't hear you. I switched, I switched views, and that's why I left it on. <laughs> um, but I'm not supposed to eat gluten, but I eat... I found I can eat something like once a month or something like that. And so I got a little crazy last week because it makes my joints, like my hand joints, you can see it. So someone said, you've been eating wheat by looking at my hand. So I'm glad today that that's not here or I'd be wanting to eat it. Mm. Well, I'm going to work on my recipe, but now 
the one I've been playing with with the chickpea flour, but now I want to see yours and see what your tricks are. Well, we'll see, and you can decide. I'm, I'm sure everything that I do, I always feel like it can still use some improvement, but like there just aren't any gluten-free sausages that aren't pea protein. And that the pea protein... Right. The pea protein oh, the ones pea protein. always have a lot of fat in them right now. So I wanted to find mm -hmm. something that was more vegetable forward. Yeah. But we appreciate you so much and big hugs to you from me and everybody <laughs> else. And I'm going to let you kind of get going because so you can I'm, go. I'm, I'm happy to answer any questions. I have a few minutes if anybody Okay, you do? Any. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, does anybody... Marilyn says gluten affects her hands the same way. And so like, mm. I find that I can do like some soy sauce or something like that. It doesn't always have to be tamari mm -hmm. gluten-free or I can do some Asian food, but if I eat a vegan wheat bun or some bread, it's, it's crazy. Um, Apple says, I wonder how many wheat sensitivities are due to the glyph glyphosates rather than the gluten and um, that's and a great question it's going to be interesting I have Graves disease which um, got discovered when I was 19 so my thyroid was overactive and so um, because of that I, it's an autoimmune disease so I am more sensitive actually to gluten anyhow yeah. so but I do agree and there is one place I think it's something mill and they actually grow they get the the wheat and mill it immediately and make it into bagels mm. and i've been able to eat their bagels successfully now i don't know if you will be able to and also i don't eat one like every day for a month uh -huh. but i can do that we have a company in texas that makes their flowers from heirloom grains it's called barton creek mills they have all kinds, they have einkorn flour, they have whole wheat, they have red wheat, they have all different kinds. And so you might be able to, to use theirs. I love their flowers. So we're getting a couple. I thought there were going to be carrot dogs today. Yes, you did, because I told you <laughs> and I lied. I just flat out lied to you today. But um, I do have some. I do have some. I, I, I thought we were going to be doing them too. <laughs> Ooh. Do you have your carrot dog recipe at weheal.health? Um, I will post it with the ribs. And, um, and if you were either. wanting to make one right now, you could go to Healthy Slow Cooking. I have a marinade too. I'm sure they're different, but I, I'm sure yours is delicious. They're, they're probably very similar. <laughs> Let me see. Chan What's in here? Uh, soy sauce. I think I ran out of soy sauce, so I did a combo of soy sauce and Bragg's. I put in some apple cider vinegar, some rice vinegar, some smoked paprika, garlic, onion. Um, I put in uh, some uh, liquid smoke. Um, gosh, I think those are the usual suspects. I'm trying to think if I left in, in anything out of there. Maybe I put a little sweetener in here. Yeah. Is that the, pretty much what you put in yours? Probably, I don't remember. I, I'm <laughs> teaching them on Saturday. Saturday I'm doing Carolina cookout. So we're gonna do like chili slaw burgers, carrot dogs. So then we're gonna make the slaw and the chili and all the things that go with that too. Oh, fantastic. I'm gonna have to, um, I'm gonna have to hop on and be one of your guests. So here's the thing with the, the, the dogs, in order to get them to absorb the marinade, I steamed them last night. You can boil them, I, I prefer steaming, and I steam them, and you don't wanna overcook them because then they'll fall apart on the grill. <clears throat> and, you know, I don't take, I don't peel them because I feel like the, when you cook them with the peel as a dog, they have a better texture like a hot dog, but I did experiment last night with peeling some. So I'm gonna do a taste test before I sign off <laughs> and let you know <laughs> how my dogs came out. Um, but you wanna steam them enough to have that they'll absorb the marinade. So I think I did mine about 10, 10 minutes or so, maybe a little bit more. And um, I couldn't get whole wheat buns this morning when I ran to the store. So I just got a regular white bun. <clears throat> and I like, I think, I've, I think we talked about this before. I'm pretty sure they have it now. It's the season. Trader Joe's dill pickle mustard. Oh, Ooh. 
Ooh, I need that. And I'm going to let my dog this. out really quick. I'll be right back. Okay, go ahead. So I like mustard. I also, I like mustard and ketchup on my, my dogs. And I like, because I kind of like, like the sweet and the salty. So I've got my mustard. I also like sauerkraut on it. I'll wait for Kathy to come back. So I'm going to put on a little bit of ketchup. I'm going to put on some sauerkraut and some sweet relish. And then I'm going to take a bite as soon as Kathy gets back. I'm back. Okay. Okay. Um, let me get, I like, I was just saying, I like mine sort of sweet and salty. So I put the mustard, I like ketchup, and I'm going to get some sauerkraut and some sweet relish. I like the combo. <laughs> Ooh, and I'm a big, like, so like where I grew up in North Carolina, hot dogs are a big thing. And you get your hot dog all the way, which is different than us, but it means chili, slaw, mustard, and onions. So oh, I like yes, raw the, onions. Oh, the bite of that on a burger or a dog is awesome. And Cheryl thinks it's just deviant. <laughs> she doesn't, like raw onions are just a no. And I, the reason all my recipes I mince the onion is because of Cheryl. That's funny. Um, raw onions are really good for you. That's one of the Dr. Furman's G-bombs. So I try to... Uh, to eat more of them than I typically would. I have been trying more lately too, and I, but I enjoy them. And Gina says, I don't care for cooked carrots. Do the dogs have any carrot taste when done? Not if you marinate them really well. So I would say for you, make sure you steam them so that they don't fall apart, but they're, they're gonna absorb the marinade and then marinate them for at least overnight. These have been marinating overnight. And then I'll let you know, but typically when I've made these before, they actually don't taste like carrots. Um, I'm not a crazy. I'm not crazy about um, cooked carrots either. Believe it or not, they're not my favorite. I love carrots, but cooked not so much. Unless they're roasted and caramelized, then I like them like that. Ah, interesting. Yeah, my mom makes like the best roasted carrots, and no matter what I do, I can't get them like that, and they're so simple. Um, okay, so now's the taste test. See how they turn. All right. <laughs> I'm letting the dog back in. I don't know if you guys can hear or not be opening the door. That's so funny. Did you see me step away a bunch of times? It was like in, out, in, out, in, <laughs> out. All the... um, okay, so this is, tastes really good. It tastes like the marinade, but I should have steamed it a little longer because it's just a little too, I'd like it a little bit softer. So I'd say fork it at around 10 to 12 minutes. The fork shouldn't go all the way through, but it should go, what would you say, what, like about halfway through? I'm laughing because you said fork it, and I just assumed you were like, <laughs> you were being nice and not profane, and then you're like explaining how you're doing something. So I was like, ooh. We fork our potatoes. We fork our carrot dogs. <laughs> mm. That's a very tasty. Oh, that's. So yeah. I can't, and Gina says, are the are they raw onions or and not just onions for Dr. Furman? Can for Dr. Furman, let me rephrase this, can it be cooked onions as well as raw onions? Probably. My guess would be both. That's a good question. I, I don't know why I think it's raw, but you're probably right. Maybe it is cooked. Let's look that up. Okay. The G bombs, right? Green uh greens, Mushroom. beans. Oh. Yeah. Onions, <laughs> mushrooms, berries. What's the S for? Um, help. <laughs> I don't know, because like it, it totally got dyslexic in my head when I was seeing it. Yeah. So I'm like, mushrooms. I thought I was like on the second letter. So I'm like, no. Um, All right, I should go take my husband to the doctor. Oh, and Apple says we need a fork it t-shirt. So I got this. If you guys are on YouTube and up, if you go to my profile, you can go to shops. So I've got the ebook for the Ninja Creamy, the only whole food plant based ebook, is on sale right now for $11.99. And I'm trying, I've made a couple of t shirts on this new store thing that I did. I'm waiting to get them so I can make sure I'm picking the right shirts to, for you to buy them. But I, we're looking for. 
if you guys have sayings and stuff you want me to put on a shirt, but I think fork it is pretty good. Yeah, fork it with the fist holding a fork with like a potato on it. <laughs> or like a carrot. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> I think that's good too. Right, well, oh, seeds. Everybody's saying seeds. That's the S. Seeds. Seeds, thank you. Thank you. This is my brain on no sleep. Okay. Um, okay. Well, thank you so much, Kathy, and thank you for everyone who, who came to join us today. I really appreciate you and love being here. Well, we can't wait to see what you're going to barbecue up for us next month. you got some time to decide, <laughs> and we're looking forward to having you back, as always. Um, so have a good day, and I hope everything goes well over at Urgent Care. Thank you. Thank you, and I hope you all stay healthy. <laughs> all right. Bye, everybody. Okay.